just filmed this whole, I just filmed the first half of an entire episode and this wasn't working. This is the microphone, no audio, nothing. All right, so I'm gonna try and condense what I had filmed all morning uh, into a few sentences. We're at a new job. This is a new job. We've been at this house before. It's an old 1950s state home and we've done some doors here. We've like redone the bedrooms. We had a massive sheet of plasterboard here at one point. Um, and now we're here to do the living room. Just a cosmetic sort of uplift in the living room and the kitchen. Whole new kitchen. And I climbed into the ceiling before. I'll put the, I'll put the video of that as well uh, to determine what's going on upstairs. And uh, that's about where I got to when I realized Ugh, that the microphone wasn't working. It's not even that it's broken. I guarantee it's just that the battery's flat, but I just didn't notice. The light goes on and the light didn't, uh, just, uh, uh. I even talked about this cool light when I went up in the ceiling that um, Gaston gave me. Hashtag advertisement, because he gave it to me. Um, it takes Makita batteries, AC power, and Bosch batteries, and I think um, Festival batteries as well. So, very cool. If you want to check that out, I'll put the link in the description. Anyway, get over it, Scott. Not all production goes 100% to plan when you're filming yourself. This kitchen is disappearing, and we are redoing the floor, we're redoing the ceiling, all the walls, and uh, yeah, a whole new kitchen's going in there. And the main thing that I wanted to figure out today, and the whole thing that I set up before when I filmed it, was two things we need to find out. That ceiling in there, we need to find out how it's built, and this opening here, we need to look at the structure of it and determine how we can lessen it. So this is your typical ex-state house in that the kitchen and the living spaces were walled off from one another. And we've got a bit of an opening here uh, to link the two places together, but we would like to make the opening a bit bigger for the new kitchen. So the idea is that we can make that higher and make this less. I need to take this off to figure out what's in there. Now the second thing was, what was it the first thing? I can't remember. This thing, the ceiling, this is softboard. All this here is very soft and spongy. It's got all these beads on it because that's what you used to have to do in order to cover the joints. Now you plaster it and create a nice flat ceiling. The issue with the flat ceilings is the materials that we use these days, plasterboard, is about five times the weight of this board. We need to pull all this off. It won't be in this episode, that's the next one. When I went up there I could see that it has battens, it has quite a lot of battens, but they look quite thin. So we might need to get thicker battens to accommodate the new weight and then look at putting some sort of structure up there to support it. Today we're, we're looking at this post. Hey! <laughs> Welcome back Saeed. How's it going? some native timber framing in there. Right. Another thing I talked about this morning with the broken microphone was um, the roof got redone over the last few days. And uh, they're just taking the scaffold down now. So if you hear any pipes clanging, that's what it is. This is a... Uh, old native timber frame and if you look at this this is the native timber jam for the door so obviously that's original native framing looks original that looks new that's closer to the kind of pine we use nowadays which tells me that this opening was probably created I don't know maybe in the last 20 years or so so let's pop off the jib board above the opening and see how they did that. Because there used to be, there probably used to be studs here, you know? This was probably the only entrance into the...
check this out. This pencil has no lead in it. None. I tried to sharpen it. I thought that I snapped it off, but it's it's like literally hollow. How does that happen? I've never seen that happen. <laughs> Nothing in it. I've got a bigger beam than I thought up here. Now I really think they have put this beam into the stud there, and then they've gone within they've gone within the uh, native timber framing that was there, because that's the original native timber. That clearly isn't. Alright, that should be a lot better. Well, I think I've got a pretty clear idea of what's going on here now. I put a big 300 by 90 mil beam in there. The 90 is made of two 45 mil beams. And uh, they made it go to the nearest stud that got them this opening. And on this side is framing. Not a post, regular framing, which is good. That means we could probably either put a post in this corner or put a double stud in this corner to take that beam. Smoker time! So, the other job. Well, it is done, more or less done. Uh, it's just the admin side of things that we have to do now. Getting it finally signed off by council, and that involves pretty much every aspect of the job. So we've got plumbers there at the moment, doing the last little bits and pieces bit of painting to be done, things like that. But it's all completely operational. They have a bathroom, they have a kitchen, and it's looking really good. In an upcoming episode, I would love to show it off in all its glory, but uh, have to wait until it's ready. And Pido is gonna join me very shortly. Uh, today was just uh, trying to establish exactly what's going on here. Big thank you to those of you who recommended Aeropress as a way to make on-site coffee. So far, so good. It's a funny thing being between one significant job and another significant job. I realized how out of control my storage container got. I went there yesterday and uh, yeah, let's just say I could, I could barely walk in there. So uh, let's go back there now and um, see how good I got it. YouTube. I've been called a tube a few times. The bin got picked up on time. That's good. Well, I've just got too much stuff. That's the problem. It is a lot tidier though. That thing was full, man. That bag was completely full. Alright. Let's have a closer look at this kitchen. The kitchen. And the laundry. Now you see if you zoom right in, you can see the layout is gonna be very similar. This is the view from the living room there where we expose the beam. And as you can see, the ceiling's going right up in this case with a small shelf that will have sort of ornamental things on it. Not a big wall like what is currently there. And then this is more of a sort of real world 
perspective of that same area and that there is beyond this point so this is looking back from the kitchen towards the living room and the fridge is in the same place and again that ornamental shelf and a post here see that post it's a post rather than that framed corner and then the uh, laundry again similar layout the sinks there currently and the washer dryer so yeah that should be pretty cool way eh? i'm looking forward to it same layout all new flooring we're going to take up all those tiles chisel them up um, from what i could tell this morning a bit of the tile broke out and i could see it was quite far up so i think there is underlay which means that the timber flooring under that underlay has a better chance of being okay as soon as you stick tiles to a timber floor it's like kiss that timber floor goodbye i've, I've had a bit of a hectic couple of weeks um the last few weeks you know finishing that job and um, jess and i moved out of our flat and into another flat so everything's been up in the air so bear with me with the videos i'm doing my best to keep putting videos out every week uh but once things have settled a bit more i'll be a bit a bit more onto it but yeah thanks for watching this exciting episode catch you in the next one